Hello artists, this is Miss Flavia with Little Blink Canvas and we have a very lovely project for today. We are going to do a project inspired by Valentine's, so it's going to be simple, cute, and lovely. And I want you guys to get all the basic supplies that you probably have at home, like color pencils and markers or one or the other or both that we can work together and just relax and enjoy. You can turn this artwork into maybe greeting cards for Valentine's. You can use it to decorate your house for Valentine's or just something that you want to do and relax while you're doing and just kind of have a good time. Uh, in fact, maybe family members, siblings, cousins, friends, or just do it alone play some music you like while you watch me and the good thing about video setup is that you can stop it at any time you can go back follow up the the step or you can move forward if you already know what you're doing and you just need to kind of see what the next step it's going to be so if you're ready i'm going to switch my camera now and show you guys my hands and what i'm going to do what supplies i'm going to use today so I have a small sketchbook over here. This is a uh, eight and a half by five and a half inches. So it's smaller than a, a, a paper copy from your printer. Um, for this one, I'm going to use it up like this in a vertical position. We call this a portrait orientation. I'm going to use a regular drawing pencil. Any school pencil will work. I have three different types of erasers. I have one that I, I like to use on the end of my pencils. I never use the eraser I have on all the pencils. They're not really good quality and they can damage the paper. So I have these eraser caps. I have the gummy uh, kneaded eraser. I love it. And this one is really, really good for you to just roll it on top of your drawing and it would line up the, the marks that you made with pencil. And then we have a regular polymer eraser, like a school eraser. Um, I don't recommend using pink eraser or any other colors um, eraser sometimes it can leave a little mark on your paper and then always make sure you have a um, pencil sharpener so then in the middle if you're drawing something and you need to sharpen your pencil you don't have to stop all your creativity in that moment that is flowing so beautifully to look for your pencil sharpeners it's almost like my lucky charm so I like to have it close by during my my drawings and then in terms of coloring supplies, um, we can have markers. And this is a brand that I highly recommend. I love that and it's really accessible. It's not expensive. There are many, many different shades and different colors. Um, and one of the things that I love about it is that you have two ends. We have a fine point and you have a broad point. So I'll show you how that looks. This one is good for you to fill in like big spaces. And this one is good for more details or maybe outlining. And they last a really long time and they are very accessible. I have links on the website under art supplies that you can purchase on Amazon. So Uhuhu, it's a very good brand and we have many different colors um, in packages. And then color pencils. I have some of the skin tones over here, black, and white and then all of the colors that you can think of i have my little containers over here for oranges and reds and greens but if you have a small container with primary secondary colors black white and brown you're good to go and you don't have to use prismacolor even though i highly recommend using prismacolor you may want to put a little bit more money into investing in prismacolor pencils but they are so soft especially the premier um category um they're very soft they smooth and they make it all so much better when you're blending the color so it's easier for kids to get this and feel really really good about their drawings than trying a, a brand that is not as good a low quality they're going to get frustrated so my recommendation is that we invest in better brands and not as much more money into and then um we can really get into the techniques and feel really good about what we're doing okay so the first one that we're going to do today, we're going to focus on a anatomical heart. It's like a heart, not just in the romantic way that we usually have a symbol for love, but we're going to use a heart just like we have inside our body. So it's anatomical. And I'm going to show you guys, um, this is 
a copy of one of the handouts I'm going to do with my virtual students. So I have even the supplies. We're going to do the supplies differently than what I have it here. But I want to pay attention to a more simplified version using these three chambers um, in different shades as well. And then we're going to bring this in a very poetic uh, and creative way in decorating the way we want it to be. So I'm going to have this close to me so I can get inspired by the shapes. I don't want to get into every single detail just like a real heart would be, but I want to bring as much um, reality to my drawing and observation to my drawing as I can. So get your pencil. Before we get started, I want to remind everybody the best way that we can hold our pencil and how that changes the way it touches on the paper. If you hold it really close to the end, to the lead, you are going to have usually a very dark line and you, you tend to put more pressure on your hands. If you hold it a little bit closer to the middle, you're going to have a lighter touch, which is good when we're sketching. And you also have less pressure on your pencil. And then if you really want to do just a shading or just a very light sketch holding towards the end and even sideways, it's a really good option. I want to remind everybody to try to hold your pencil instead of holding like this, practice holding your pencil with these two fingers just hold it, you have a hands, close it like this and see if you can practice. It's gonna make your work look way better uh, in terms of controlling where you want the lines to go. Another thing I wanna say, so observation number two, um, I don't want you guys to rely on using your erasers all the time. I want you guys to just, the lighter you, you sketch, the less you're gonna need your eraser to clean up the lines. And once you know where you really want your lines to be, then you can clean up your work. So I like to have your eraser close by, but I don't want to feel like I'm doubting myself for every single line that I put. I want you guys to really relax and just let your hands guide and make the mark on your paper. So the first thing that I want to do as I look through my ob object, I want the heart to be close to the lower part of my paper. I don't want it to be too higher there because if I want to do some decorations with some flowers or whatever I want to add, I know I have space to go up. So I'm going to start making what we call our placement marks. So I want the bottom of my heart to go right here, the bottom of the paper. And I don't want the valves over here, which is the tallest part of my, of my drawing, to go higher than here. So I'm going to try to contain my heart over here. I'm going to start with the drawing that I have, this big piece over here. And again, I don't need to draw this just like it is here. I'm going to try my best to see how I'm holding my pencil. And because I have a camera here recording what I'm doing, I want to make sure that you guys are seeing this better through the camera. So I'm going to put a little bit more pressure. And again, there's no need to do exactly what I'm doing. I want you guys to feel like this is gonna be such a cool way I'm bringing to the side. You're gonna do your best and that's all we can do, right? We can only do our best. I have it here. I think this, I made it a little bit too big. Let me clean up over here. I think sideways is good, but I made it too tall. So then, shorten up a little bit on the sides, bring it here, and then here, okay. So this is that part over here. Let me go over with my pencil. I have a tendency to draw very lightly because that's how I do all my sketches, but now on the video. So I have this shape over here. If you want to do the shape differently, this is going to be your heart, your interpretation of that. So it's fine. So now I'm going to do the other one that is on the back over here. So here I go. I'm going to go here. I'm going to open up that valve and see that valve in, com in um, comparison to, in relationship to that other one is right here. So I could have stopped a little bit lower here. And I'm making this little opening. It's like a bottle. It looks like a bottle. <laughs> I'm just going to make this a little bit slower. Okay. And then the other one is what's on the very end, what's behind everything. So I'm going to go over here. I have it there, make it a little bit thicker. 
and then coming here it already goes up and then i have one two three almost like little fingers one two i can shape up this better three and then this it's gonna go all the way here and finishing here gonna go over to make the line slightly darker so you guys can see better and every time we talk about um nature um and our body is made of all the chemicals and tissue and everything we see in nature anyway so every time i talk about animals and nature and so plants and uh, vegetables fruits we pay attention to the lines being more organically and more soft and fluid it's not very geometrical and not geometrical at all. So I want you guys to pay attention to this as we're doing our drawing because a heart is inside of our body. Of course, if you want to make something a little bit more squarey, if you want to change up and put it in your style, then it's great. But I just want you guys to know that I'm not keeping uh, any geometrical lines on my work because I want it to look more like a real heart than a more geometrical orientation okay so i have the basic shape of my heart and i can show you guys simple ways to do this i can flip my my paper here so if you feel like oh my gosh this is getting too much there's so many details and your heart doesn't have to look like mine one way that we can simplify our drawing is just we can work on a bean it's like an egg then we can simplify by bringing this up and going lower a little bit, making it a little bit more pointy. And then we have another layer here. And this can take one thing here, another one here, and another one, one, two, three, here. So it's an egg, a big egg right on the other side. Then we have a little bridge or maybe it can look like, I don't know, like a upside down smile. And then we have one, two, three, four, five fingers going up like this. So it can be a little bit more um, detail on each of these chambers, or it can be something way more simplified that will look like it shapes much more. Um, it looks like it, but not necessarily the same way. So anyway, this is to show you guys, I want you to do what you can and give your best and simplify because this is art is to be happy and exciting and relaxing. And if you start stressing out, maybe you need a little break or just try a different way to make it simple and just have fun with it. So now I'm going to do a little bit of a cleanup on my work. All the lines that I know I don't need anymore. I'm just going to get this out this. and I'm going to start by using a marker I want to get three different shades just have just like I have it here I'm going to get three different shades of maybe pink or maybe uh, let's see what we have over here I have one, and it's actually one, uh, that may look like what I want. Then I can do three and five. And I like to recommend to all of my students to test it out before you know for sure if this is the color for you. So I'm gonna go on the broad side, I'm gonna make a line. I really like that color, and I know I have enough ink on this one. This one, it's similar. And then the last one is going to be this one. This one is really dark. I love it. Okay, I really like the different tones. So I'm going to use and I know that they have ink enough. What I'm going to do with them, I'm going to start with the one that I have in right at the, at the very end of it, then I'm going to move to the one in the middle. And then I'm going to go for the one that is right in front of me. I like to do this and as I'm planning, but you guys pick the the, the one that you want to get started with. OK, and the same way, if you don't have markers, but you have color pencils, it's going to be the same way. So get your color pencils and then you can get started. I'm going to do with markers now. 
the first thing I'm going to do is, um, let me get what color I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm going to go get the, the fine point and I'm going to outline it first. I'm going to go slowly by being mindful of time. I'm going to try my best to go right on top of the pencil lines. And I'm going to outline every place that I know I need to fill in with that shade. Okay. Right. Then I'm going to move to the broad end of it. And one thing for you guys to pay attention when you're using markers is that don't go over the same spot many times and just go fast. Go one uh, line at a time, and I'll show you what I mean. This one has a broader um, take, so it touches on the paper with a bit more um, space, and then has a little pointy here. I don't need the pointy. I'm going to try to touch the whole diagonal angle here. So I'm going to go. And then with the tip, I can get into the small spaces that are left blank. Now I'm going to go one big line at a time. I'm going to try not to go over the same spot twice. Because what happens if you're using a mark and you go back and forth and back and forth, not only you're wasting some of your ink, but it's gonna make it darker. And I'm gonna show you, if you go over the same spot more than once, you will make it darker, the lines. And I'm gonna show you in a minute. So now I'm gonna switch to the fine point and I'm gonna fill in the spaces I left blank. As you guys know me, we don't leave any blank space, baby. So I'm gonna fill in, I'm gonna try not to go over many times. And just now patching the places that I left blank because the, the other side of the marker was too broad. And if by any chance you have maybe a little line that gets out of your place, you need to be creative and look and see what you can do to make this look better and adjust. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna extend my line like this. So it looks like I did this on purpose. So, Oh, and I have this space. I almost forgot this. So let me go. Follow the shape of each of the small objects that you have. This is, even though this is one heart, we have three different spaces here, three different shapes. So we go and respect the flow and respect the motion, following the curve, following the shape to make it a very smooth coloring. So let's say I wanna create a little area that's gonna be a little bit darker. What I need to do is just go over with the same color twice on the same spot. And you see the difference in shade. You're gonna see that it's gonna get so right here. Just by doing this, you guys see that it gets a little bit darker here. Just so. And I'm gonna do another one here. I can do maybe one the edges only would be a good idea. I can even switch to my broader. See if I go over again, what happens? It gets darker. It makes it a little bit darker. So it's almost like I'm using another color. So that's why it's important to, if you don't have the intention of making everything really dark, don't go over many times, just go on time and stop. And if you want to darken up, then you go two, three, many times until you find that darker shade that you were looking for. You don't have to switch to another, to another color. Okay, so I'm done with this one. I'm going to set this aside so I know which one I use for, for that space. Now I'm going for the middle one. It looks like a little bottle. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to outline it first. Make this nice. This is very similar to the color I used before, but 
you're still going to see a variation. And now I'm going to go for the broad, the big and. Just trying my best. That's all we can do, right? So now I'm going to fetch inside here too. Try not to go over many, many, many times on the same spot, being very mindful of how I'm touching my marker on the paper because I want to give my best. I want to put my best effort into this. Okay. It looks like it's the same color. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over now and make this slightly darker just by creating that second level. Right there. It looks darker. And then I can even go again. Following the same path as I did on the first layer. So now I can see a good difference between this one and this one. Now I'm going to go for the last one. This time, I'm not even going to outline it first because I already know everything that is, that is left is going to be the the one that I'm going to outline, but not outline, I'm going to fill in. So I'm going to try to follow along. You guys know that we can easily move our drawings around instead of trying to reach and not finding the way. Be creative, find the way that you can move your paper. If it's um, not easy for you to move your paper, then just try your best to reach without touching the side of your hands on the paper. And then I'm gonna to try to always following the shape of that object. Try not to go on top of the line. I mean, you can overlap a little bit, just like on mine. And this marker over here is trying to to go a little bit more like we call the dry, dry uh, brush technique. So now I'm gonna get the small point, I'm gonna fill in outlining on these edges and that makes it darker too. So if you feel like you're doing in hearing that noise, you're probably gonna need to find a better way of doing it. And you don't want to damage your supplies. You want to respect the art supplies you have at home, right? Your parents or grown-ups or you got as a gift. Yeah, take good care of it. Okay. And the better care you, you take of your art supplies, more high quality art supplies you're going to get. Because then your parents or the grown-ups that take care of you are going to see that how much you respect the art supplies and they know that they can trust that you're going to always take good care. Always closing the lids, making sure that it doesn't dry up. Put it here. Okay, so I think the last one is right there. And I'm outlining. And I'm going to make it slightly darker here on the edges now by going over again on the parts that I don't see a little bit darker line. Okay. So now I have this interesting heart. Um, you can see there are some lines over here that got a little bit darker because I had to patch and went over a few. I'm going to make this darker inside on all of them using that darker shade. I think that makes it really nice. And then I can set this aside. Now I want to add some veins, um, just like I see it over here. And they look like branches from trees, like or maybe roots from plants. So there are many ways that we can do this. We can get blue, purple. Let me see if I have black or even white. I think I'm going to get, let's see if I have more blues over here. Yeah. 
any color would be a good color. I think I'm gonna try with this one. And I want the line to be really skinny. So I got this, look how cool that looks. And now I'm just gonna, wherever place I go, I'll be happy with it. And opening up these lines. I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer so you guys can see better. Um, just think of roots from trees and plants or branches, how they go, how they move. Maybe I have one on this side, especially when the, the background color is lighter, you can see it way better. I have one on that side. And here we go. So using color pencils and using markers, they are really good friends. Um, and if you feel like, oh, I want mine to be a little bit darker or, or lighter, just go over now that you know where it is. Try out, makes uh, sense for you to experiment. And this is just paper. So the last thing that can happen is maybe you don't like it and then you learn and then you can do it again, knowing what makes you excited about and what color is going to work best for you. So art is just about trying, experimenting and see how, how it makes you feel. So if you wanna go with some white on top of it, you can have some, make it really sharp here. You see, especially on the dark one, if I go over with a little bit of white on top, it kind of makes it pop. just going to try something that makes me happy to see that. I think that's nice. Okay. And the same you can do with black. I think I liked, uh, I like doing this uh, in that way. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to find a color for my background. And one color that I think it has like a very soft and more fantasy like or romantic would be blue and I want to get maybe this green uh, blue aqua blue I don't want it to be super sharpened but I want to be a little bit more and this time I'm going to paint my entire background and I want to leave some spaces just like I have little clouds so the first thing I'm going to do see how I'm holding my pencil close to the end the middle towards the end I want to have some little lines that are going to look like I have clouds over here I can have another one maybe coming here. So I'm gonna place these marks and then everything else I'm gonna fill in with pencil. I using, I'm using my pencil sideways, trying to apply the same pressure all around so I don't have to worry about um, one side getting a little bit darker or lighter. And I'm following the same orientation. So if I started going sideways, so left and right, left and right, I'm going to keep that. Now, if I go up and down and, I, oh, I forgot this was a cloud. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> I left it blank. So um, if I'm going up and down, I'm gonna keep going up and down. So it's good instead of just doing like this. Another way that we can color in big spaces would be to go with your pencil in circular ways, um, which I'm not doing in this case here. Let me just find it here. And I'm gonna bring it close to the camera when I'm done with that step so you guys can see how that's looking because I know through the camera sometimes can look so light. You can press it a little bit dark at some spaces, keeping it lighter at all the spaces. I'm using sideways. So it's not a lot of pressure on my hands at all. Just make it easier, less tiring for my, my hands. And this is another cloud. That is a small little cloud, another one there. And now I'm gonna look and see, I'm gonna bring it closer. 
Now I'm gonna go and see if I can shape up the clouds a little bit better. We can even try to, to go with white on top and smooth it out around the clouds. That makes it, that's why I love having a white pencil and then we can fill in inside. Let me try to, okay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. There's a side over here where I wanted to have a new a cloud, but I forgot and I, I put some pencil color inside. So I'm just gonna have some spaces where I'm using the white pencil. White pencil is great for blending. Especially if you're if you have a good quality smooth soft pencil like Prismacolor, it is one of the best ways for you to use white. Is blending the colors anyway. So I have it here. I don't have as many clouds that I wanted to put, but I'm okay with that. And I'm gonna put my color there. I have my black and white. And then I can think of maybe having some flowers coming out of these vaults, just like a vase. So let me put, I'm gonna get some greens. Are having some leaves coming out. We can try and see if markers will work okay. Sometimes with the oil uh, from, a little bit of the oil from the pencil, the markers on top may not work so well, but, um, then we can go back with pencil. So let me see. Yeah, that is working really good on this one. So I'm gonna have a big, 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 big fat leaf over here. Again, you can do with color pencils, you can do with markers. Uh, I'm gonna have another one that is gonna come sideways like this and maybe leaves are gonna be smaller. It's coming on the side of, on the back of the heart so we don't see the end and filling in. I can still see the, the pencil lines on the bottom, underneath actually. Maybe we have another one that comes on the side. So there is really like no right or wrong. You don't have to do what I'm doing. I'm just going with the flow. I'm not really planning for, for these beautiful leaves. I'm just getting them there as, as I as I do it. Uh, I'm not sketching before, I'm just going with it. I think it's a good practice to do. So whatever comes your way, you'll be happy with it. You'll be okay or find a way around it. Okay, I'm gonna do another one coming down. Right here. And I'm gonna go for, um, let me see. A little bit of different colors, maybe. Have some plants, some flowers. Do a little, um, maybe right here. Do a little rose, that would be nice. Let's see. Then I can get my color pencil and color inside these little gaps for my rose. And do sunflowers. Sunflowers usually we see uh, in the summer, springtime and summer. And since Valentine's, it's in February, usually cold. I think we can focus on more different types of plants and leaves. But again, it's your imagination is your work. So however that makes you feel good, then that will be the, the best color. And then I'm gonna get a color pencil and then very gently fill in the spaces so we don't see the blue. And because I use blue and using red, we're gonna see some color changing over here. That would be some, some amount of purple because that's what happens when we mix red and blue, right? Press it a little bit. And then we have it there. I'm pretty content with that. 
I can go back to having this. I forgot to put the stamp coming here. So now I can do that. I can even have another loop, smaller one on this side. Now I can have there's so many different ways. Maybe a lavender. Let me get a nice purplish. Uh, right here, and then there's one here, one there. What else? There's so many possibilities. I think this with some orange would be really nice. Let's put some petals here. Oh gosh, it looks great with that blue sky. It gives like a nice texture to this orange. I love it. This is gonna be behind. And then I'm gonna have some yellow in the middle. And see, I'm doing this all with markers, but now I'm gonna switch to having some pencil lines. Let me see if I have, I'm gonna get some orange here. So many different possibilities. And I'm gonna make some, I can even hold I'm gonna get some reds. So it's all about experimenting. It's all about trying. Very nice. Now I'm gonna get a different shade of green to have this. So you can make it as colorful with flowers as you want to. You can make it as simple as you want to. It doesn't have to follow any, any rules. Um, so just use your imagination, envision how you see your drawing, how many flowers you want it to be popping from it. Um, I feel like I still need to see some different colors over here, but I'm gonna detach this from my work and see and show you guys what I have. So for a real, uh, like a more realistic heart, this was my inspiration. We can always use um, a marker, maybe that, that one over here or a Sharpie and just outline everything. I'm gonna show you how that can look. If you feel like it needs a little pop, I don't want to pop your heart, right? But we can pop the, the colors here. So you can outline with a Sharpie or a permanent marker or even um, the black from your markers too. They're not permanent since you're not using any liquid watercolor or watercolor or any paint that's not going to bleed in. We don't want the heart to bleed in, right? We want to keep it nice. I have that. I like outlining in black and I think it gives a little bit more like a cartoonish illustration look, but also makes it very fun and more pop art way, especially with a small little point like this one. Uh, we can define the petals a little bit better. But this is completely optional, makes what makes you happy. Um, don't have to, there are no rules to this. The most important thing is that we have a good time doing it. Then we experiment to see what we like and what we don't like. And at the very end, we sign our name. Um, and maybe on the back, you can write, something for Valentine's or if this could be something you can frame and give like a real heart or a real love. I don't know, you make my heart blossom. There's so many things that you can write. There's so many things that you can say to family members, to friends, to teachers. Um, so there's so many possibilities and turn the lights on back again. So I want you guys to enjoy.
have a good time doing it. Put your ideas on paper. Use your color mar your markers, uh, your color pencils or your markers, both together or separately. Uh, and just, I don't know, play with it. Maybe you're going to have a monochromatic where you're going to use just one, sh one color and change lighter and dark. And maybe you're going to use warm colors or just cool colors. Or maybe you're just going to go with the flow and find whatever colors I'm going to use it. They're going to make me happy and simplify the heart or make it a really nice study. Maybe you even Google and see like a real heart, how it looks like, the anatomy of it. So you can really pay attention to the details, the lines and the shapes. So I want you guys to have fun and have a lovely Valentine's. Okay. Thank you guys, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.